Morning folks, it's Andy here from Rustin Woodsman and thanks for joining me. So today's video is a, a kit based video. Um, I'm out today on a sort of jolly if you like in the woods, practicing a bit of navigation, just wandering around the area. When I do that, if, if, it's, on a, if it's on an occasion where I'm not bringing the camera because I'm just out for myself rather than doing anything for YouTube or whatnot, I have a sort of small kit that I bring with me. It's, it can be sort of looked at as a, an EDC kit, but you know, it's a sort of EDC wilderness kit if you like, bushcraft kit, whatever. Um, but I usually take it out with me on these types of trips where I'm out just having a bimble about, a bit of navigation practice, or when I'm going to a new area that I've never been to before, and I want to do a sort of recce of the area. And I want to be, you know, light, nimble, get about easy without being lumbered down by a big pack. So I thought I'll show you that kit that I bring out with me. So today there's no rain expected, it's just going to be a really cool crisp day. Um, actually there's nice blue skies out, it's made a change. Um, but I've opted for this anorak, I've, it's a poly cotton mix and I've given it a few coats of uh, homemade wax treatment and it uh, just gives it a bit of water resistance. I had it out yesterday in some sleet and drizzle and it, it did really well at keeping me dry. The reason I like this type of jacket is it's got this kangaroo style pocket on the front now, I haven't got a great deal in it, but what I do like to keep in it is my map of the area. And that's it there. Usually I'll keep this in a waterproof case, but um, the other day Rusty jumped up at me and uh, his claw caught the waterproof case and ripped a gouge out in it. So I'm waiting for a new one. So yeah, normally this would be put in a waterproof pouch so it can't get damaged by rain or whatnot. I also keep with me a write in the, a write in the rain notepad and a pencil. I don't use pens because if you try to write in the rain before with a pen, they, they don't work very well, if at all. A pencil does. And this is just for if I need to take notes. If I want to put, if I'm walking through an area and I like it, like the look of it, I want to take down the grid of it, I can write it down in my notepad. Or if I've got any ideas for, you know, future videos or any new kit that I want, I'll write it down in my notepad. But that's what I generally keep in there. If I'm wearing my gloves, or if I have my gloves with me but I don't need them because I'm a warm, same as my hat, I would keep that in there as well. I've got a belt pouch, a sort of mini belt kit on. I'll do a sort of close up of these now. So this little pouch here, this used to be my first aid kit pouch, but since I've, I've opted for a bigger one so that I could permanently carry my first field dressing and my tourniquet in it. So this has just become a random belt pouch now. But the items inside that, I used to just distribute them between my pockets, but they're quite, you know, bulky and uncomfortable to carry in your pocket so it's it's nicer to have this belt pouch now but inside this little cotton bag i've got a few sticks of fat wood in there and also a couple of those little dragon dragon gel alcohol fuel tablet things and this is just emergency tinder in case things do go wrong when i'm out and about i just make getting a fire going easier without too much faffing about the bag itself it's like i said it's cotton so if I absolutely need to, I can use this for char cloth. I'm not a big fan of char cloth because obviously to make char cloth you have to use one of your, you know, cotton pieces of clothing. I prefer um, charred punk woods because it's free. This little blue pouch, I've got my head torch in there and also three spare batteries for it. And then the last thing in there is some tissue paper. This is not for wiping my nose, to be honest, if I need to wipe my nose, I'll just wipe my nose on my glove or my sleeve. I'm not worried about the coronavirus. It's a good thing I haven't monetized my channel because I get stung for saying that. But uh, these are wiping my bum, or if absolutely necessary, I could use them to get the fire going. On this side I carry my little 500ml stainless steel water bottle. I used to carry my big one litre stainless steel water bottle but after a few miles of carrying that big hunk of metal full of water it becomes very uncomfortable and uh, this one it just rides a lot better. You barely notice the weight when it's full up. I go for stainless steel because if I do need to boil up the water, if I feel the need to, then I can do. But also if I, you know, I do like a bit of spruce needle tea now and again. I do like pine needle tea but I think it's a lot stronger flavour. Spruce needle tea is a bit milder and I'm happy enough just to boil spruce needles up in this bottle and if needs be, just sip straight out of it. So when I do come out on these types of trips, whether it's, you know, recce in a new area, or like today, up in the Ocals, just navigating around, having a bit of play, a bit of a bimbo, I do bring a cutting tool with me. Um, it's one that I can, you know, conceal, if you like, on my person that people won't see. 
Yes, keep it hidden from them, not because I'm worried or anything, it's more so that they're not worried, you know, they see a lone guy bimbling about in the woods with a knife dangling from his belt and whatnot. Um, but generally I try and, you know, keep off the beaten track anyway to avoid people and to avoid that sort of situation. But there are times where you have to use the, use the paths. So I'll show you the knife that I bring with me. So yeah, this is the knife. It's got that Kydex sheath with a tech lock and it can be carried in a scout fashion and it just tucks away nicely under the jacket. No one knows it there, so no one needs to flap about me, you know, wandering about in the woods with a knife. So yeah, it's a knife that I designed myself and I took a lot of features off a couple of different knives that I've used over the years and basically merged it onto one knife and Guy Stainford made it for me. On the other side of my belt, I've just got my ferro rod. I also carry a few items in the pockets of my trousers, so I'll show you those as well now. So in this pocket here, I just carry my mobile phone. To be honest, I never get a signal when I'm up here, so for an emergency device it's kind of useless in that respect. But um, what I do like it for is taking pictures, uh, especially different plant life if I don't know the name of it, and I can take a picture of it and then try and ID it when I get home. In this pocket here, just got a small cuts kit. And also, I did show you my map and that before. I do have a compass, and it sits in this little pouch. And it's got the, the pace beads on it as well, so I can keep count of the kilometers as I walk them. On the actual trousers, you've got two cargo pockets on each side, and on the inside of the trousers, there's two dividers. As I understand it, they're designed to carry, you know, two 5.56 round magazines for assault rifles and whatnot, but I use them as dividers, so on this one, I just got my silky folding saw and this one there's a hank of paracords there's about 10 meters of paracord here but it's got the inner strands as well seven inner strands so there's actually 70 meters of cordage here so in this bucket i've got my gps i like to bring this with me when i'm doing the reckeys so if i'm going up through a specific spot and i like the look of it i can then get the exact grid reference write it down my notepad or mark it down on my map for the future also in here, I've got a little snack for myself. When I do these trips, I, I, I rarely stop other than for a water break or a map check, but I don't really stop for food, but I do bring a little snack rather than a big pack lunch. And these salt and pepper cashew nuts are delicious. I also carry in here, and you probably see rusty, you can smell it. There's a couple of Scooby snacks. It'd hardly be fair for me to sit there eating my, eating my cashew nuts and he's got nothing, so I'll give him one now. There you go, bud. Go on, you enjoy that. So yeah, folks, that's the, uh, the kit that I bring out with me on these types of trips, you know, wrecking a new area or, or just a bimble about, really. Like I said, generally I don't bring the camera with me, um, so as with today, I'm probably going to stash it somewhere now and then pick it up on the way back. I remember doing a few walking shots, I'll see how I feel. But I was sort of prompted by the idea of doing it. Um, there was a question posted a while back in one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, that I'm a member of. Um, a guy asked, he asked how do people find like, the places to go while camping to? And everyone, you know, answered up, I did as well. And everyone's more or less similar, you know, if people are like Google Earth, etc. For me, it was when I drive around, if I see somewhere that looks, you know, pretty you know, wild and remote and whatnot, I'll memorize the area of it and I'll check out on Google Earth. If I'm happy with what I see, then I, I'll, I'll find out the, um, the Ordnance Survey map number for it. Head down to W. H. Smith or Waterstones uh, and get a, you know, have a good look at the map, good map recce. And if I like the look of it, then I'll buy the map and then I'll, I'll get myself down there. And then I will bring this, this, you know, this kit with me. And that way, like I says, I'm light, I'm nimble, I can cover more ground without being lumbered down by a you know, a big heavy haversack or a heavy pack or camera kit. Well folks, I'm going to leave the videos there now. And as always, I really appreciate you taking the time today to watch. And I'm going to head off in that direction now. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. Take care.